She has a tough decision. He wants to reconcile, he says, but not right now and not just exactly the way she wants. She finds it an emotionally difficult situation because of the fact that he's there on the weekends and it's wonderful. But he's not there during the week and she's trying to make a decision about what to do. Before I tell you more, let's just hear it from her and then let me give you some ideas about mm, how she can deal with the situation. He is working out of town since Thanksgiving and is only home on the weekends. Um, we are recovering from him having an affair. Um, he only comes home on weekends, but last weekend he told me that he is finally leaning more towards reconciling than divorce, but he is not ready to reconcile yet. My question is, should I initiate smart contact with him when during the weekends everything is great between us, but during the week when he is out of town he wants no contact with me whatsoever, and it is just emotionally draining me. Um, it's extremely hard to get through the week when things are so good on the weekend, but during the week he... He has nothing. I don't get anything from him. Um, we do have kids together. I have talked to him about possibly starting visitation with him so that I would have no contact with him to try and relieve some of that um, emotional strain that is on me from being with him. And he said that at this point he feels that if we did that, that it would push him away because the time that we spend together is so good. So I'm just not sure what to do at this point. She has a pretty tough situation, don't you think? A husband who had an affair, who's gone all during the week with no contact whatsoever, yet great weekends. And when she tries to push for more, he says, hmm, I'm considering reconciling, but if you do that, then I'm not going to. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Beam. Welcome to Marriage Radio. By the way, if you'd like to call in your own question, we'd love to talk to you. Go to SpeakPipe, that's S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E, -E, SpeakPipe.com slash Joe Beam, all one word, J-O-E-B-E-A-M, and you can leave a message up to three minutes if you will. We'll take that. We'll edit it just a little bit, not to change your message, but to take out any extraneous noise or whatsoever, and we'll play it on this program and answer the questions. Now, I do have a few to get to, so don't be disappointed if I don't get to yours immediately, but my goal is to answer every question that comes in. Again, that's speakpipe.com slash Joe Beam. Now, back to this lady's question. Here's her situation. She mentioned, as you heard, that the husband had had an extramarital affair. You also heard her say that he's been gone for quite a few months now and that during the week, no contact whatsoever. Yet, the weekends are fantastic. And so she asked about a thing called smart contact. Now, if you're not familiar with the things we teach on this program, let me explain to you what smart contact is. You see, we tell you that if indeed you wish to reconcile a relationship, if you want to put a marriage back together, then you do not do that by whining, begging, pleading, those kinds of things, nor do you do that by trying to manipulate or control the other person. And therefore, smart contact is contact that you have with your spouse who might be straying or who doesn't want to be in the marriage for some other reason, whatever that might be, that if he or she wants out of the marriage, that you do not try to manipulate, cajole, convince, persuade. You don't try to whine, beg, plead, any of those kinds of things, that the interaction you have with him or her is going to be basically about business. In other words, it's about the children. It's about any other kind of business, like paying bills, whatever it needs to be. You're warm. You're friendly. You're not cool and distant. You're certainly not mean. But you're not pursuing the other person. And that's what we mean by smart contact. Now, if they want to talk about things, if they open up the door to talk about this, that, or the other, then feel free. And be free, free, uh, feel free to share what you think But be very careful that you listen, that you truly understand what the other person is saying, because it becomes extremely important in these situations. And so smart contact is just a way of making sure that the other person understands that you are not chasing them or trying to control or manipulate them. 
that you're there. You're warm and friendly. You're glad to talk about any other thing, but that you are moving on as if he or she is only a part of your life having to do with the business, whether that business is the kids or something else you need to deal with. And so when she says, should I just have smart contact in a way she actually already is. In the sense that during the week when he is away and he's not contacting her whatsoever, she's not pushing it. She's not trying to track him down. She's not trying to check his phone with his GPS. She's not doing any of those kinds of things. She's actually living her life during that week as she should. And in that sense, that is smart contact because she's not doing those things that would make him, well, actually be repelled to move faster away from her because that's what those other kinds of contacts do. Yet, on the weekend, apparently, they have a good time. And again, that probably still is smart contact because if he's there and he's opening up and he's talking and he's laughing and she's reciprocating, that's actually a good thing because that has the potential of rebuilding the relationship. And so when she asks, should I institute smart contact? Well, ma'am, based on what I'm hearing, and of course, I only have just what you said here, but based on what I'm hearing, you already are. The real question for you, it seems, as to whether or not you believe that he's actually telling you the truth or if in some fashion you feel that he's manipulating you. I think that's the true question you're asking me here. Let's deal with that for a minute. I certainly can't tell you why he's doing what he's doing. I don't know. As a matter of fact, because you don't have the information, you don't know either. I imagine it has crossed your mind. Well, what if it means that during the week when he's off working in that other place, he's involved with somebody else and has a life there with that person during the week, and then he comes home on the weekend, that life is put on hold while he has a life with me and with our kids, and then he goes back and works the week, and he's again got a life with her. Is that a possibility? Absolutely, it's a possibility. But it's not necessarily reality. The only way he can know, or I should say that differently, the only way that you can know whether that's occurring or not is if you have some evidence or proof that it's occurring. Now, there's only a couple of ways to get there that I can think of. One is you do something sneaky. You follow him or you hire a private detective or whatever you need to do, and you get the evidence and you find out what he's up to up there. Now, here's the downside to that. Unless you're ready to divorce, I wouldn't recommend it. Because you could, as you understand, find out, indeed, he's having some other kind of life up there. Hmm. And if so, then obviously you're faced with a major decision. On the other hand, you may indeed find that he's just working, that he's not into anything, that the reason he's not contacting you is because he's focusing on the work that he has there and that that's what he's doing all week long. You do understand that is a possibility. Now, if you do the checking on him, the following him, the hiring the private detective or whatever it might be, And he discovers that it's going to be all about you not trusting him. And that's going to make things bad. As a matter of fact, even if he were involved with somebody up there and you had that evidence and proof, based on what we see repeatedly, the reaction is not going to be, (laughs) it's not going to be, oh my goodness, I'm caught. I'll straighten up most of the time. Of course, there are exceptions, but most of the time what happens is it's all about the fact that you did this terrible thing by violating my privacy. Yes, I know it's not realistic, is it? I mean, they should be saying, okay, I'm caught. The jig is up. But but it's amazing how often they turn and attack you instead. Therefore, unless you really are ready to divorce, I don't recommend that course of action. If you are ready to divorce, go ahead. But if you're not, don't. But then you're back to, well, well, wait a minute, what if he's doing something up there and and he's manipulating me by saying he's contemplating reconciliation and he's doing that just to keep me placid, to keep me from doing anything, to keep me from acting so he can have both worlds. Is that a possibility? Sure, it's a possibility. But it's also a a possibility, as I just said, that he really is concentrating on his work And he really is enjoying being with you and the kids on the weekend, and he truly is considering reconciliation. At least to the point that when you said, okay, let's just not you and I have any contact anymore. We'll set up visitation with the kids. He said, please don't do that. If you do that, it feels like you're going to push me away. Now, could that be manipulation? Yeah, but it doesn't sound like it. 
if he didn't really want to have interaction with you, if he didn't really want to be around you, then it would seem that that would be the option that he would take immediately. Hey, sure, it takes all the pressure off of trying to make you happy of being around you. I can go do whatever the heck I want to do, and I'll still get to see my kids. It would seem that that's the option a person would pick if he were actually into something else. Now, notice I said seem. I am not God. <laughs> I do not know everything. I can't tell you everything about what a person's thinking or doing. I'm just trying to give you the whole scenario here. It would appear to me that no matter what's happening where he's working, that he genuinely is interested in somehow doing reconciliation with you. That's what it looks like to me. And if that is the case... No, you've got to decide. Do I let him live in this? Well, it's not exactly the same kind of valley that we normally talk about, but it's kind of a valley. And for those who don't know what we teach about the valley, let me give you a very brief version. Typically, we refer to the valley when we talk about somebody who is involved with two people. Now, I'm not saying he's involved with anybody else. Please hear that. But we typically say that a person's in the valley when he or she is involved with um, someone else and with the spouse, and it seems that they don't have to make a decision either way because things are going well, or at least well enough, in each of those situations, they don't feel compelled to make any changes. And people say, well, if my spouse is in the valley, don't I need to do something to stop that? And the answer is, yes, but maybe not right now. What we recommend is this, if you can tolerate the valley for a while, then do so because if your spouse indeed is having communication and interaction with you, he or she is talking, they're opening up, they're being transparent, they're being vulnerable in some ways, even if not completely so, then you have opportunity to rebuild the relationship. And by rebuilding that relationship, you may just get your spouse back. But notice I said, if you can tolerate that, because some people can't. And it sounds to me as if the woman that just made this call that we listened to has gotten to the point, well, she's gotten to the point where it's, I don't know if I can live like this anymore. It's emotionally tearing me apart. And so we suggest that when you end the valley, you do so because you decide that it's being destructive to allow it to continue, either destructive to you or to your children or even to your spouse. Now, when we say destructive, we don't mean it hurts. Of course it hurts, but destructive is it's, it's actually doing damage, doing damage to any of you, you, your kids, him, even physically. In other words, you're being so stressed out, you can't eat. You don't eat like you should. In other words, you, you can't sleep as you should. You're beginning to have physical problems and difficulties because of that. Well, that's doing damage. Then it's probably time to do something or intellectual to the point where it, it has become so obsessive with what you think about that you can't function at work. You can't do your job or the things that you need to do. But in that case, if it's doing damage, then it's time to do something or emotionally that you're so torn apart that you have no peace within it all. You find yourself worrying and fretting all the time. You're a nervous wreck. You start snapping at other people. Your life begins to change and do something about it. Or even spiritually, where it's affecting the way you believe, either about your religion or about just your own morals, the values that you hold, the beliefs that you have held to be true. And if it's damaging you or your children or your spouse, then yes, it's time to pull the plug. Now, notice I said that this guy was in a kind of a valley. I am not saying at all that he definitely is involved with somebody else, because the possibility is that he's not. And when I said it's kind of like the valley, it's only in the sense that he can go off up there and work all week, and it seems to apparently be some kind of a comfortable situation for him, and then he can come home on the weekend and be husband and dad, and he doesn't seem to feel compelled to have to make a decision one way or the other. Now, at least I'm basing that on what you said. I don't have all the details here. And while it's not exactly like the valley we talk about, it has some great similarities in the sense that he's got two things going on, and he apparently has no reason to alter either one of them. And so when you said, okay, I'm thinking about altering it. Here's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to set up visitation with the kids. I'm not going to be involved with that. Then that's definitely a way to pull the plug. And if you're being physically emotionally, intellectually, spiritually damaged in the ways we talked about before, then maybe it's time to do that. Yet, if you can wait just a little while, 
that can be to your advantage. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. It is always your decision what to do. I don't live with the consequences of your decisions. Therefore, I don't have the right to make them for you. So I'm not going to tell you to pull the plug. I'm not going to tell you to stay as it is right now. Here's what I would suggest, though. Make the evaluation. Is this something that I just can't live with much longer? It's tearing me apart. It's damaging me in one of the ways that Dr. Bean just talked about. And if that's the case, then maybe before you absolutely pull the plug, you might want to do something such as this. Maybe you sit down with him and say, okay, I'm glad that you come home on the weekends. I'm glad that while you're here, you're a great dad. I'm glad that when you're here, you're interacting with me. As a matter of fact, I enjoy these weekends. They're fun. They're pleasant. I really, I really look forward to them. But I need for you to understand what I'm feeling during the week. Now, notice we're talking about it from the perspective of you and what you feel, not the perspective of him and what he does. When people feel they're being attacked, they typically become defensive and they don't hear what you're really saying. So if you say, look, buddy, you can't have it both ways. Either you're going to stay up there or you're going to come here or you're going to do something differently or you're going to talk to me every night on the phone. This is what you got to do because I think you may be doing something up there you shouldn't be doing. If you take that kind of approach, in all likelihood, his response is going to be to become defensive. And it's not going to turn out well for you. So therefore... I suggest that you, as I've already been saying, speak to it from your own individual, personal perspective. I really do enjoy you coming home on the weekends. I like what's happening here with the kids, with you, with me. This feels good. I like the fact that you told me that you're considering reconciling. So thank you for that. But may I explain to you what I'm going through? The fact that I don't hear from you Monday through Friday. I mean, not until you come home. It tears me apart inside. Oh, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. I hurt the pain within me because it makes me worry. I don't want to bring up what happened in the past about your affair. So that I just mentioned it because I know that you're thinking that's what I'm thinking. And so that's why I'm bringing it up. But I'm not trying to beat you up about that. But I'm hoping that you understand the kind of insecurity that that history creates within me and to wonder why are you not talking to me Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night? Why are you not calling me during the day? Now, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just trying to get you to understand how I feel. I would love to reconcile. It would be awesome. It'd be great. I, I'll do everything I can to make that happen. But I, I cannot continue to live this way. I just can't. Because it's just ripping me apart. And then you can describe very briefly, don't go into great detail, what it's doing to you physically or intellectually or emotionally or spiritually. And again, don't beat that dog to death. Don't talk about it too much. Just briefly, because if you get too much into that, then you're going to lose the whole focus of what's going on here. And the focus is, honey, I love you. I'd love to work this out. But I can't handle these kind of emotions. It's just ripping me apart. And so therefore... I'm not trying to push you into anything, but I'm needing to tell you that there's something I'm going to have to do. And it's not because I don't love you. It's not because I don't want you. It's not because I'm not being patient. I'm being as patient as I can. It's because there's, there's pain within me. And here's the damage that I just mentioned. Don't go into it in great detail again, you know, either physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. And if it's damaging the kids, you can briefly mention that as well. I would do it all very briefly and say, so... I need you, if you, well, I just need you to make a decision. Either contact me during the week so I can have some peace of mind about this or for my own emotional health, not because I want to get rid of you, but my own emotional health, I'm going to have to set up a visitation where you can see the kids when you need to, but I'm going to need to pull away from this and find some healing my own and move on with my life. Now, I just need you to make that decision one way or the other because I'm going to do that. If you make the contact with me, we'll keep on doing it this way. You know, you come on the weekends. I love to be around you. And this is what the contact is that I need. If you decide that you're just not going to do that, it is certainly your choice. I respect your right to make your choice. Just as I expect you to respect my right to make my choice. And my choice is I'll start setting up the visitation and I'm going to go ahead and protect myself emotionally because I need to do that for me. Now, that's the way I would suggest that you do it, but you have to decide if it's time to do that. 
I understand your fear. You're looking at this. Well, on the one hand, he says he's contemplating reconciliation. On the other hand, this is ripping me apart. Can you look into a crystal ball and know exactly what the best decision is? The answer is no. (laughs) As with many, many things in life, sometimes you just have to make a decision based on where you are at the time and hope and pray it's the wisest decision. If you're a religious person, I would pray for wisdom. I don't know if I'd ask a whole lot of counsel from my friends or family because friends and family tend to give bad advice because of the fact that you're hurt, you're worried, you're upset, and he's hurt you. And so they'll tend to give you bad advice about that. So I don't recommend that you go that route. I recommend that you pray, that you think, and maybe you just sit down with a piece of paper and write down, what are the advantages if I go on for a little while like this? What are the disadvantages, particularly like we've talked about before, to me and my children, even to my husband, physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, write it all down and get it in front of you. Then look at it and make a decision. Now, once you make the decision, make sure you will stick with that decision because waffling will work against you. If you make that little speech to him, and it's not really a speech, it's a communication where you're being open and transparent and warm. You're not making an oration. And if he were to say something like, well, I'm just not going to do that. And then you say, well, okay, well, it's going to go off a little bit longer. You've just lost all kinds of ground. So if you're going to make that declaration that this is where I am and this is what I'm going to do and you need to decide one way or the other, make sure ahead of time that that's really what you want to do and then you stick with it. Does that mean if he says, okay, I'm not going to be contacting during the week, go ahead and set up the visitation. Does that mean that all possibility of reconciliation is gone? The answer is no. No, it doesn't mean that at all. Obviously, it moves in the wrong direction for a little while. It does. But in the long run, you're being strong and standing up for yourself without yelling and screaming, without accusing, without being mad. In other words, you're doing it all from you being open and transparent about your own emotions and being genuine and real while being kind and gentle. That actually can very much work in your favor in the long run. I am so very sorry the situation exists. I, I hope and pray that when you share that, that he listens, that he hears it. By the way, if he has questions, be glad to answer those questions. Just don't over talk about any of it. You don't want to talk too much about your physical problems, for example, if you have them. Be careful not to get angry and start accusing him. And even if he says something such as, well, I guess I'll just take the uh, visitation with the kids. Don't get mad and say, I knew you'd do that. Don't do that. Just say I'm sorry you made that decision, but I will do what I said I will do. And then be warm and friendly, kind, but live up to it. You don't set those kinds of criteria or boundaries and then back off. Because if you do, if you do, you lose ground way too much. Again, I'm sorry for the pain. I truly hope this works out for your advantage. I truly hope you guys can put it back together. Again, this is Dr. Joe Beam, and this is Mary's Radio. And if you'd like to send your question to us, again, go to SpeakPipe, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash Joe Beam, J-O-E-B-E-A-M, one word. You can leave your, leave your answers there for us. Also, if you will, please go to our website because we have tons of free information there for your articles and podcasts and e-books and all kinds of things. Go to Marriage Helper. That's Marriage Help, E-R, MarriageHelper.com. And you can find all kinds of free resources there. They're there for your use. And if you want more specific help, we offer coaching. You can actually interact with our coaches via telephone or Skype or other ways like that. And if you want to know more about that, because our coaches are extremely good, then you can contact us at our office at 615-472-1161. That's 615-472-1161. And some really good people working with us will be glad to talk to you and help you think things through. For example, in a situation just that I just described, I suggest that you not ask advice of your friends and family. You want somebody who is neutral, and our folks will be. They're well-trained. They're really good at what they do, and you may just want to take things like this and call and ask to visit with one of our coaches about it. There's a small fee, of course, because we have to pay them, but that might be the way that you want to do this, and it'll be of great value to you. And if if your spouse is willing to come to an intensive three-day workshop to work on your marriage, 
Be sure to ask about that when you call that number, 615-472-1161, or look for our intensive three-day workshop when you look on our website, marriagehelper.com. Until our next podcast, this is Dr. Joe Beam saying, may life be good.